So have you got plants that are struggling a bit? Plants that you're just sitting there going, maybe, maybe these could be doing a bit better. Stick around with me and I'll talk you through some of my struggle buses at the moment and what I'm going to be doing to fix the issues. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, has Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today, as I said, I want to talk about some struggle buses and I'll show you one of the first plants right now. So right behind me here, I'll pick it up and show you, is a plant that I had not realised had entirely rotted out in its medium and it's been growing, the tip has been growing fine, and I didn't really pay close attention, but I'll show you what I discovered. So this is, and you might be able to see that the leaves are curling in, this wasn't doing it until recently. This is my mother plant of my philodendron white princess. Can you see the stem there? So essentially what has happened with this plant, and we can kind of look at this together now, is I am pretty sure if I pull it out, <laughs> Actually, I don't know what's happened. No, no, it is, it is. That's the root system. It has rotted, basically. It is not doing well. Now, the upper stem, because it lost so many leaves, you can kind of see it's dry up to there. So this, the rest of this plant, was supporting itself from whatever was available in terms of moisture within this stem. So what am I gonna do now? The, the really obvious option here is, and I don't need an awful lot of propagations of this because I have got a couple of propagations of this already going, so we're good. But this bit here, which is still green, it is still relatively tender. What's gonna happen is I will cut right here where it connects to the join. I can see that inside it is still relatively healthy. The other thing has dropped down. That is what is left of my white princess mother plant. Is it a shame? Yes. What is gonna happen with this at the moment is it's just gonna get propagated in some water. But this is a plant that hadn't been struggling, not from what I could see, but it was. So that's all that's gonna happen with this one. It has got some decent aerial roots on there. This is gonna go into probably some water, I would say for right now. And I will do that whilst the cut is open because I do want it to absorb as much moisture as it possibly can. And then what I'll do, and I mean this, this newest leaf even unfurled like a week ago. So it was still doing its thing. So always, always, always check your plants properly, visually look at the plant and how it's doing because you might be missing something like half the stem is dried out because it has had root rot and it's growing up the stem. So, and if I'd wanted more, there was probably more cuttings that I could take from that remainder of that stem. But as I said, I've got loads of this and this is relatively straightforward to find these days. So, but because it was my mother plant, I do want to continue it on. So I will try to salvage this. So this is one struggle bus. But also before I move on to the next one, guess what this means? I have got space where that plant was now another plant will take its space. The one that was right next to it and a bit crowded will now move into that space. But let me show you a, a plant that was struggling a bit that I got from a most recent Equigenera order. And at this point, the fact that I'm even calling it a plant is I'm doing it loads of favors. So this is the Anthurium argyrostachium. <laughs> that is the leaf, the one that was remaining. That's how much green is left on the leaf. Is it doing a lot better in here? I can't see many fresh roots, but the one thing I will say is I've not got any more rot. It's not moving up and that is brand new. So eventually what will happen is, and I'm leaving this on here because even though it's got the smallest amount of green, it can still photosynthesize from that. Should I probably take off the brown papery bits? Yes, but at the same time, I don't have time. So <laughs> it will remain like this. But this is doing, I don't wanna say okay, but it's not doing as badly as I would have thought. And a lot of people would have thought this plant is dead. 
This plant is a fighting for its life right now and I am here for it. I am trying to make its life as easy as possible. I have put in a sphagnum moss collar just because there were some healthy roots that were outside of the semi-hydro media and I want to give them the best chance of survival. Will I probably be taking this plant out of this maybe next week and removing some of that uh, rot that's happened on the roots? Probably but I also don't want to stress it too much. I do want to see if I can maybe get this leaf to come out possibly first. And knowing my luck is probably not a leaf and it's probably an inflorescence. It's like the plant's swan song. But yes, I want to see if I can kind of get this to be a bit better. But this is one of the struggle buses, the only real struggle bus from the, the most recent Equigenera order that I had. But I did have another plant that I was worried about and a lot of you were worried about, but actually surprisingly that's doing okay. Let me show you that one. That one is the Anthurium flavolineatum, flavolineatum, yeah, flavolineatum. And it's this one, it's the one with the kind of very, very lance-shaped leaves, which are very, very turgid. Um, and it seems to be doing okay and Remember, this is the one that didn't have an awful lot of roots. I'll see if I can find a video and add it here. But I did put a sphagnum moss collar around it. I have seen recently that it has started growing roots in here. So I will be checking out the roots at the bottom. Ooh, no! Oh, see, look at what I've just seen. Can you see that little root there, basically? So it's doing its thing, basically. So it's, it's, that's why it's doing a lot more. Did it sacrifice a leaf? Yes, but it's kept all of its other leaves. So that's why I'm always like, initial appearances might be deceiving. This is a plant that I thought, and a lot of you did as well, that was not gonna make it basically. I mean, look at that tick shape and that little cup shape that's happening there. <laughs> Do love this plant. But yeah, there is always a chance for a plant to bounce back. And if you're not 100% sure, if it's not going to make it or if it's not doing as well as it could, treat it like a propagation, I always find. And nine times out of ten, you will be able to either spot what the issue is and adjust, or even if you can't spot what it is, it will give the plant enough of a chance to kind of get back into the bounce of things. But yeah, this one, I am so glad it's doing okay because I loved the shape of this so, so much, basically. So yeah doing relatively well, and those little roots down the bottom, and there's another one that you can't see as well, but it's doing really, really well. So yes, doing exceptionally well. And yeah, the roots are relatively small on this, but not as small as you might think. So yes, the flavolineatum is kind of bouncing back. And on that topic as well, one of the learnings that I've had, because I said I was gonna do that order from Equigenera in the winter, because I wanted to see what it was gonna be like getting the orders in at the coldest time of the year. The, the biggest learning I've had from that is, is quite interesting because you do get plants that are probably going to be struggling more than when you would get them during the growing period. However, because it happens so close to when the weather was starting to change and go towards spring and summer and the growing season, the bounce back rate was phenomenal. So that is a good thing to be aware of. Okay, another struggle bus. And this was another plant that I got last year, I think. And this is the, ah, oh, why am I blocking? The Rubricinctum Platinum. And I mean, look at the gloss of those leaves. And it's doing really well. It got, this was its newest leaf, but it got caught on the way out and unfortunately took away the tip. Uh, and this might show you what the issue is with this plant. And I'll see if I can bring it in a bit closer so you can see. So this one, I will say, I have really enjoyed growing it. I am not regretting purchasing this plant. I think it's truly beautiful. However, I will say this is beyond a pest magnet. Also, I'm finding that I was watering this relatively infrequently and it was doing quite, quite happily, but at the moment it is drying up like that. Now, can you notice something else with the leaves? Can you notice that they're all kind of going diagonally down that way? This is quite high up and it's getting an awful lot of light at the moment. So, 
This is basically meaning that the plant is trying to kind of shelter its leaves because if it's getting the light coming in this way, it's gonna, it's gonna burn it a bit too much. And it might be what is stressing this plant enough to have the issue with the pests. So what I'm gonna be doing with this plant is, you might be able to see the first line of defense because this also gets a bum load of spider mites, is I've got the predatory mites on there and they are definitely keeping the spider mites at bay but they're not doing very much for the mealybugs. <laughs> Our mealybugs in this space. That's fair. You can see them as a crisping. That is happening because it's drying out a bit too much. So what's going to happen with this plant is I'm going to give it a cash po. Because at the moment, in the beginning when I first got it, the roots were, I thought were maybe a bit rotted. So I wanted to provide it with as much aeration as possible. All I can see at the moment with this plant is very, very healthy roots. So it has bounced back. As you can tell, I think this only had like one or two leaves when I first got it. But I think it would really, really benefit from something like a cash bow to keep that moisture and humidity in. And as I said, use what you can. Like what I'm doing with this is I'm looking at it and it's one of the one of the reasons why I know that they're a bit more expensive, the clear pots. And I know that's not easy for everybody, but plastic cups could work as well. Um, using something like a clear pot, I can instantly see that, you know what, the roots have bounced back, but it is shockingly dry, basically. And this shouldn't be, this only got watered a couple of days ago. So it generally means that it's not keeping its moisture for as much as it could. At this point, do I think the soil has become a bit hydrophobic? Possibly. So when I mentioned in one of my other videos, and hopefully that video would be up, uh, I know it will be, it's coming out today. Um, when I was talking about evolutionary processes, this was a plant, and unfortunately this is a bit dry at the moment, but this is a plant that I mentioned, something about edema. And this plant, when it gets watered now, it creates these darker lines where you can see the moisture in the back of the leaves because it's absorbing it too quickly, because it's drying out too much. So the inconsistency of the water is something that I need to address with this plant. But yes, unfortunately this is a bit on the struggle bus right now. Will I be able to get it to bounce back? Yes. I mean, I prefer my plants to be struggling right now rather than in the summer because right now I've got time to deal with them before the, the kind of big, big growing season comes in and they still keep growing. I need to desperately deal with the levels of mealybugs on this leaf. This is also the oldest leaf, so instead of me trying to deal with it, I might just sacrifice it. And actually, shall we take the Band-Aid off together, shall we? Let me take off the predatory mites, because I'm going to need that. And the other packet, they're all on the same leaf, which is hysterical. Um, and let's just get rid of that one oldest leaf right there without me snapping everything. So give me a sec, because this is really attached. There we go. It is now off. But I mean... And I could have kept that one going, but you know what? It's going to be easier for me rather than trying to treat all of those mealybugs and they've probably got their house somewhere in there. Done. And this has opened up the space a bit more for me to put it next to the other plants now after I've treated it, obviously, and take it from there. Now, this is another one of my plants that is a bit struggly at the moment. So this is the, oh, the Syngonium. Oh, I can never remember. It's the one with all the different L's, basically. But you might be able to see some of these foliage is getting a bit yellow. Now, first thing I want to do is check in the roots and see how they're doing. They are okay. There's no real root rot that is happening on this. However, what I do know from the care that I am providing this plant is that I am watering it still on its winter cycle checking and watering on its winter cycle basically. So what is happening now, it's getting a lot warmer in here. It means a lot of these plants are starting to get thirsty again. <laughs> as the allotment is picking up as well. So there's just too many things to do in a single day. So, <laughs> but yes, this is a plant that I need to start watering a bit more frequently. And what is happening and what you might be able to see here is actually old leaves. And we talked about this on another video, and actually that video hasn't come out yet, so I'm not gonna ruin it. 
But it is a video that's coming up and I talk a bit more about yellowing of leaves and that will be happening soon. I've had to film quite a few videos, like every week now for the last two weeks I've filmed an extra video. So I've got two videos to kind of bring out to you towards the end of this month because I'm actually heading up to one of the islands off the coast of Scotland for a wedding that weekend where I would normally be filming. So I need to film a bit in advance, but that is coming, I promise. But yeah, these are older leaves. So they are being sacrificed by the plant because it's not getting the moisture levels that it needs. So I'm just gonna take them off and save it the effort because to be fair, it is a relatively bushy plant. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine growth points. And you might say, oh, it could be a bit bigger. This plant I find generally grows quite low and if I gave it a moss pole, would it do a bit better? Yes, but I might start getting these bigger leaves, which isn't what this is all about. I do want those kind of narrower, kind of almost serrated leaves with that white, almost silvery kind of, dare I say the word mint green, kind of coloring and this is the best way that I found to keep it that way but yes syngoniums are forgiving they always have been so trying to keep it happy isn't too difficult but me observing what might be wrong with it and then kind of following on and doing what I need to do in order to bring it to a better place is generally always my kind of modus operandi basically but that's that's kind of what I wanted to show you in terms of my struggle buses, you saw how easily I was ripping off leaves, both diseased leaves and also leaves that were not really serving a purpose. And the point I'm trying to make with this is we will all have struggle bus plants. We will all try to fix them. So do the best that you can, adjust where you need to be adjusting and you should be all, all good. So yeah. Tell me about some of your plants. Have you got any that are struggling at the moment? What are you doing to fix them? Let us all know down below and let's have that conversation. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.